Okay, hey, say hi, say hi to these new people. This is uh, uh, Anna, uh, and that is Ken. And I've been talking to you guys, especially if you're on the server, I've been kind of mentioning it. I've had Anna before on the streams. Um, I rather not be the one that introduces them because I'm terrible at introducing other people. So I'm going to go ahead and allow them to introduce themselves. So uh, Anna, you can go ahead and start and uh, tell them a little bit I about think, yourself. I actually, I actually think I'll introduce Ken and then Ken can introduce me. Ken, do you want to do that? Ooh, mad, okay. mad right, skills. All right, do it. <laughs> So, so Ken, in addition to being uh, my husband and the uh, parent of two cats, um, he is a uh, intimacy, relationship, and sex expert. He uh, um, his focus really is on how um, the a woman's sovereignty, not just outside the bedroom but in the bedroom is the foundation point and the cornerstone of genuine uh happiness and scientilating uh uh the everything sex conversations okay. um all of it and i'll say a couple other things about him as well is that he's had a very unique background where um he trained for about 10 years um, a deep dive into women's sexuality and specifically uh, the way a clit works. <laughs> so we could say <laughs> a lot about he literally he like a clit can commander, right? Got figure it. out exactly what a woman is. So lucky me. And um, and then also has taught for another 10 years in another organization. So he has those kinds of distinctions that are very unique. Am I missing anything, Ken Blackman? Nope, that was wonderful. <laughs> Great. And Anna is a women's rightness and empowerment coach, uh, specializing in a few different things. She has she has don't like domain knowledge of different personality disorders from from first person experience and the work that it took to overcome and kind of transcend and move beyond the the shackles of some of those personality disorders. Um, Narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and um, <clears throat> schizoid personality disorder. Um, but she has she has knowledge both from the from the point of view of someone who who has struggled with those herself and has broken free of a lot of things that that few, especially in especially in narcissistic personality disorder, which people get stuck in and and are there the, for their whole lives. And she's really made progress and being able to develop skills like like empathy and she, she can help people she shows people how how to do that that's one area of domain knowledge the main th thing that she focuses on is being right with all parts of yourself as kind of a first place to start just being right with all the different parts of yourself and all the different ways that you are and finding rightness in all of those without without um like beating yourself up or uh finding yourself wrong and in the process of finding rightness in all those places that's where uh freedom and sovereignty and um agency and a little bit of a little bit of just breathing room starts to come in so um that's what i can say about her anything that i left out no, it's good. <laughs> I mean, really, they'll feel us and talk. Jesus, It'll be. Man. I wish somebody yeah, would Jesus. talk about like... me like that one day. <laughs> what the hell? Like that was like you guys know way too much about each other. That's great though. But, like that's amazing. Like it was like I'm guessing you introduced each other before. No, he's never introduced me before. Wow. I've never introduced. Look at that. Before. Well, it sure as hell seemed like you have. Okay, so you guys already know who I am. If uh, you don't, uh, you're probably better off for it. But in any case, I am Schizoid Angst. I am here to talk to these wonderful people about uh, schizoid-related stuff, especially in relation to um, advice uh, on dating, relationships, that sort of stuff. Because I've gathered a few questions that um, some of the schizoids on my server uh, have for you guys. And... To those that aren't aware, uh, I do have a server. If you're schizoid and you're watching this or you stumbled across this, go on Discord, um, go to the About Me, click on the link, join up, go through the vetting process, and you're going to find a community of people 
that you might actually be able to relate to for once in your life. So that part's pretty awesome. In any case, um, I think I'll just jump straight into it. Is that okay with you guys? Do it. Absolutely. All right, cool. Let's not waste any time because uh, God knows some of these questions are probably going to take up a lot of it. Um, okay, so what I want to start with is communication. And the question that um, we can get, let's, let's start at friendship, all right? Let's start at friendship uh, before we jump into like, you know, having a relationship or d dating and things like that. So how does one, and, and if I, if I remember correctly, um, Ken, you, you are diagnosed schizoid or you're not, not diagnosed. And in oh, fact, okay. I'm of, of the three of us, I'm the least knowledgeable about this topic. Oh, I okay. Just, well, then I'm glad in, you're here. Yeah. In describing myself as Anna has gotten to know me and gotten to know my history, she recognizes a lot of qualities that she identifies, oh, you are definitely schizoid. And I, I don't know enough to, to say one way or another, but I, I take that at face value. But oh, I don't, okay. I'm, yeah, so. Okay, well, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see if that, <laughs> I, I guess yeah. that was a miscommunication on my part. I, that I was uh, probably on my end, and I apologize. For nah, that's all here. Who gives a shit? Uh, okay, so, but the first question is, uh, what sort of advice, Anna or Ken, um, would you guys have for trying to, um, and, like, trying to befriend or trying to find trust or gain trust in somebody that may be schizoid or is schizoid, uh, because of the trust issues and everything else and the safety issues and all, all that. If, if you were to give, like, say, a piece of advice on how... A person could approach someone else and that could even be another schizoid um what would be some uh, advice maybe you could have for trying to open someone up without intruding on them like how do you how do you get somebody to accept you or want to develop a relationship with you when that person has uh so many barriers and so many things uh that would cause them to push everything around them away uh by any attempt uh, of such yeah. a thing I, do you want to take this first, or do you want me to? I I have a thought, but but I would have hey, you just go throw first your theories out there. Just throw this isn't like so. Whatever. I mean, I'll speak. I'll speak for the people who I know who are schizoid, and then for myself. Yeah, um, when true. I'm when I'm in my own schizoid, uh, there there are ways in which something will trigger my own schizoid um, uh, uh, adaptations, and I also have people who I know who are who are definitely. Uh, skew more towards that. Mm -hmm. Any attention on the things that I'm doing in those moments or that they're doing in that moment is like the death knell. You actually have to pay <laughs> less attention to the things that they're doing or not doing. Mm -hmm. Don't bring it up. Don't make it a big deal. Don't even make any of it wrong. Just however way that person is, make it no big deal at all. Like, cool. Everything's fine. Like, it, like genuinely accept them exactly as they are in that moment. Don't need them to be different. Mm -hmm. Don't want them in that moment. If you're genuinely wanting to be friends with them, like open up inside of that first and then show an interest in what it is that they're, they're you know, if they're, if they're doing something, um, just like be interested in what it is that they're doing and let them, let them talk at their own pace speak at their own pace uh, and whatever it is um that's actually very good advice um because uh, <laughs> well it is very good advice because um one of the easiest ways to um get a, a schizoid individual's attention um because it's not the easiest thing to do is to discuss or talk or bring up subject matter that is relevant to their interests um mm -hmm. and to stay away from the subject of the person uh, if, if, uh, if for some reason you feel that, or if the, if you know the person schizoid, say it's a family member or something, or it's a friend of yours, and this is something that they've been diagnosed with, or, or, or not a friend or somebody, you know, or, or you, you, you suspect they, they may be, um, if you're knowledgeable enough to suspect such a thing, um, the best thing to do is stick to the subject at hand. Um, so if they're, uh, if they're reading a book, don't ask them what they're reading, uh, ask them um if they've read another book that's th like the one they're reading if that makes any sense so it's like oh uh you're 
I see you're reading this. Have you read this? It's quite good. And then bring up the subject if that if you're attempting to to talk to them. Uh, sticking to subjects that are outside of them is uh, is kind of like the easiest way to kind of put your foot in the door. If in fact uh, you want to. <laughs> but go ahead, Ken. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, not surprisingly, my advice was going to be pretty much the same, which is which is to talk about common interests or shared interests. And the way I was thinking about it is like, so you're say you're in a group or you're wherever, whatever it is that has you your attention go to this person, like whatever it is you have have the thought, oh, I'd like to be friends with this person. Um, there's an experience that you want to have with them. But if you go straight to that, like, oh, I want to be friends with you or something mm, about them, fuck that. then it's, mm. yeah, that is not good. But if you, if you find common interests or topics interested to, interesting to them to talk about, then you, you are being in a state of friendship with them. You're actually having the experience that you, that you hunger for. So, so that's, that, that seems like the best way to do it. Attention off of the person and attention onto what what you can what you have in common or shared interests it is to to further that a little bit too um pertaining to the stuff i've discovered about myself and the other schizoids i've communicated with um is that oftentimes many schizoids uh though they are emotionally aloof and socially detached they can many times actually attach themselves emotionally to varying degrees to subjects to ideas to concepts um, so I, I've met plenty of schizoid that is emotional in regards to, you know, things they read, fiction, nonfiction, a subject matter, and by connecting to their interests and showing interest in that connection, that is a method of kind of, <laughs> I guess, uh, connecting to them by proxy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's it's you... connection by proxy. Yeah. Yeah, you being interested in the thing that they're interested in is literally you being. It feels the same as you being interested in them on a core but level. But it's not intrusive, and it it's not like mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, that is awesome. That was that was that's great. Uh, wait, what is? <laughs> Orthus just posted. I once completely annihilated some guy when he used one of my inside jokes with me when I definitely didn't know him. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing that most people don't realize about a schizoid is that it that regular sometimes uh, regular uh, uh, water cooler talk things, or small talk. Yeah, like I was gonna say, regular talk can feel very violating at times. You know, even just someone being in the in like uh, like sometimes I won't. I don't know about for you, uh, but like. I won't know where I am if I'm in a place where I feel like heightened in that particular adaptation. It's mm -hmm. like, I might not even feel like someone actually being in the room, I won't know where I am. And so it feels violating to me in a way that might not have felt that way yesterday, do you know? So yeah. it, it, it's no, weird. It's, 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 well, what's interesting is uh, normatives in general. Normatives yeah. Yeah. can feel intrusive, uh, mm -hmm. which in mm -hmm. any other instance seem innocuous. But to yeah. the schizoid yeah. are quite annoying, frustrating, and uh, oddly enough, on a, a more sort of, uh, I guess, I don't know if it would be psychological, philosophical level, it's also oftentimes a reminder of their alienation because it's something they can't connect with and it's something that makes little sense to them to participate in. And when someone attempts to do it, it serves as a reminder of, oh, by the way, you you don't understand these normatives. This is another reminder that you feel disconnected from things like this. Uh, and yeah, it's not intentional an or yeah, it's not no. a malevolent on the part of the person no. doing it. It's just no. it just is what it is oftentimes. Uh, and yeah. it's just an unfortunate um, aspect. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and move on. Let me make sure this connection. Are you guys good? Connection good? Okay, because I saw a little lag for a second, got a little scared. All right, so. Oh, and by the way, chat, if you guys have any questions on there um, that you want to just throw out here, like the, you stumbled across this and you're like, hey, I, I want to have a question about uh, schizoid related relationship advice or ideas or how to, you know, create a friendship or hold on to a friendship, so on and so forth. Uh, go ahead and post it in chat and um, I'll look it over like while we're talking. And if something I think is relevant to the conversation, I'll go ahead and drop it in. 
Um, okay, so the next question I have, and I like this one. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, so Anhedonia. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are familiar um, with Anhedonia. Yes? Yeah, Anhedonia yes. rocks, right? It's the, <laughs> it's, it, it is the shit, right? It is, um... Okay, so it's the uh, it's uh, Anhedonia is like the uh, the <laughs> double. The, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. double. It's, it's a double edged sword at times um, because it's there are moments sword. there are, there are moments that you are happy in your numbness, uh, and there's yeah. other moments where it kills you from the inside out. So uh, the question is, um, what do you do when your partner? Is detached due to anhedonia besides giving them space and a safe place to return so a lot of people you know that's the usual advice uh, if somebody's in a state like that give them the space they need give them the comfort they need and say but what what form of comfort can someone bring to a person that is feeling desperate in their feeling of nothing essentially their inability to take pleasure in even the simplest things uh, whether it's for a day, a week, or a few hours. In the case of myself, my anhedonic episodes usually last a few hours, and they're usually triggered by high levels of stress. Uh, so when my brain feels like, oh, too much stress, too much stress, this is having a physiological um, like negative response to you, my, my brain just kind of goes shut down. And then, like, I don't feel, I stop feeling much and enjoyment or anything. And I just want to lay there and do nothing. So what is, do you guys have any advice on how to like navigate somebody so that you, they feel your partner feels as if they're there for you, but they also understand that you're in this kind of state. I, I think one thing to keep in mind is, is to uh, not necessarily through your words, but just through the way that you're being to let them see or feel that you are not being adversely affected by the state that they're in. Like you're okay. You're fine. You, the partner who to, to someone who's, who's going through a bout of this, uh, like that always worked well for me when I, when I would have these, and my, my episodes were long, they would be weeks, weeks or months long. Um, but what the people that I felt the closest to and the people who I could maintain closeness with during those times were the people who weren't overly like loving or caring or like any of that stuff, but they were just able to be normal, be themselves and be like this feeling like they're fine when they're, when they're around me or in connection with me. And something about that in itself had like, felt more inviting and felt like I could, I could even like, I didn't have to avoid them or stay away from them while I was going through this. I could actually go through a, a bout of this in, in connection with them. Yeah. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Cause you want to say something else? Nope. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of thoughts I want to, I want to speak it to like, on the one hand, if you have, if you're in an anecdotic state and you like, um, and then also if you're with someone who's in an anecdotic state, like how do you actually like manage yourself and, 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 yeah, uh, and any, be in, any in connection be with. Good, yeah. So when you're in an anecdotic state, I, I just was a little bit in there yesterday, like the past couple of days, I've been in this place where I'm like, Oh, and then yesterday it, it, uh, uh, at least for me, the way Ken and I deal with it is yesterday, I couldn't quite figure myself out for like about an hour or so. I just was like, Ugh. I like, Ugh. and so I said, I'm just going to say the shit that's here. And then I just started talking about all the things I hate, like the, all the pressure I felt like I just was like, I couldn't locate myself. Mm -hmm. And I could like I, everything just felt awful. I hated him. I hated everything. I just like hated everything. Yeah, everything um, feels distasteful. Everything and feels and horrible. Like, yeah, non pleasurable and just negative. Yeah, yeah. Like the world like felt empty. like it was, you know, like yeah, yeah. And so I just started talking about like all the things that I like. I can't. I don't. I don't like you. I don't understand this. I don't understand me. I don't understand like this. I don't. I like. And then I just want to. And then finally, what started to come out was after I said all kinds of stuff. Um, was, um, I just need to go away. I just wish I could be here in this spot without anybody around me. I just want to be alone inside of this. And he was like, and now mind you, we, we have the, the lifestyle that we can do this. He's like, if you need, uh, uh, an Airbnb or a hotel for a few days where you could just like feel yourself and be yourself and whatever, like you can do that. And 
even him just telling me that I had full permission, full That's permission. One. That's the one. To actually do it. A, feel the feelings, do it if I needed to do, and that he Disappear was not if he going wanted to. Yeah, and that he was not going to be rocked or affected. Like he knows that I still love him, that it has nothing to do with the relationship. Mm -hmm. That it's like my relationship to me, something's going on that I feel like it's too much. And then I Absolutely. need to like just him being like, you got to do that. Go do it. Calmed me down and helped me to be in the world again. So exactly. for me, so for me, just like talking it and saying, like, even if it doesn't make any sense, I don't like the, the color of the walls. I don't like this. I hate people talking. There's so much no like I just having noise, permission to even feeling. too much stuff. So too much sensory. feeling, too much this. Yes. So that's just permission to speak that. And then the other thing, if you're on the other end of it, I hate to say this, but if you're involved with anybody who's got any kind of personality adaptation, you are on for the ride of you being grounded in who you are, no matter what's going on over there. Yeah, and, and that uh, two things I want to bring up uh, in relation to what you just said. One, yes, yes. Uh, if you decide I'm going to be in a relation, if, I, if especially if you're a... Uh, a neurotypical individual and you decide i'm going to be in the relationship with, with a person that i understand has a uh, adaptation or a maladaptation that they're struggling with and they're attempting to overcome you have to be secure in yourself uh if you're not if you don't feel like strongly enough about how secure you are in yourself um that's going to be probably an issue for a budding relationship because there's going to be moments where they say or do or act out in ways that um you won't be able to help but feel as if you're maybe being attacked or neglected or something like that when that is in fact not the intention of the person enduring such an episode that is yeah. not the intention or oh or, fucking or, yes yeah yeah i want to say one more thing to this uh, so so and it's not to say that you have to be a doormat it's not to say no. that you have to be someone who's just like never has feelings or never has wants or needs except that, uh, the only thing i'm saying is that when a person's inside of the throes of their adaptation in that moment that is not the time to be like well what about my needs or wants they actually don't have space for themselves let alone another per like they don't have space for anything and so when they're back to themselves and they're back to some sort of balance, that's when you can actually have a conversation about like, so like about you, whatever it is your needs are, but the moment when they're no, triggered by something that ain't happening, they're, they're not that happen. happening. Um, the it other happen. thing I wanted to mention uh, pertaining to what you said as well is, um, uh, man, I had, I had it. It was when, when I went like this, you said something, damn, I can't remember what it is. It had to do with it um go ahead what did it'll you think it it'll was? come to you it, it'll come oh, to you it permission. It does. God. Permission. Permission. permission yes okay so that's Thank very you. important um is the okay when my, I, i'm gonna give you an anecdotal situation so like when i'm in an episode of that such right and i'm with my wife i tell her like i'll tell her hey i'm dealing with some Macedonia right now like i everything feels great and dead and I want to be alone and I can't like when I'm in that kind of state, I can't enjoy the things I normally enjoy. So I can't enjoy my daughter's giggling. I can't enjoy I, it, won't, it won't necessarily bother me, but I can't enjoy it. Um, I can't enjoy, you know, everything that gives me any kind of feeling of being alive or interests or, or things that I, I like to think about. All that just feels gray and dead. And um. And during those moments, though, they're shortened by the fact that she tells me that, go ahead and do your thing. Go ahead and go lay down. Go lay down. Go take a nap. Read your book. Uh, play some brain, brain dead video game that I could just do on autopilot for a while. Just, just go do your thing. And I also tell her sometimes, because I know there's times where even if I'm in such a state, I have to get shit done. All right? I have to... You know, I have kids, I have uh, stuff to do, I have responsibilities, I gotta get shit done, it doesn't matter, I can't just shut down my whole life for that moment. So, sometimes I have to push through such a state, right, because it's, it's, it's horrible, and it's the worst shit ever, but sometimes you have to, but, but, knowing that your partner is aware that, that you're doing that, that you're doing it for them, or for something that's important to them, and that you're going through the motions, even when you're in such a state, because you know certain shit gets done, them being aware of that and respecting you for it is insanely important. Um, and and the in that permission idea is so important because 
you know that you can exit the situation. If you know, if they tell you you can exit the situation whenever you wish, oftentimes you won't. Uh, it's just knowing that you can that that kind of relieves a lot of that stress. Um, yeah. The thing about the thing about those of us who have schizoid, yeah, the thing about those of us who have schizoid adaptations or or maladaptations is that um, we are uh, terribly afraid of any kind of um, pressure or feeling of imprisonment, and things that don't make any sense that feel like imprisonment feel like imprisonment to us. So, because we just didn't have any boundaries. And so, because we didn't have any boundaries, nobody, like, they, they were always transgressed upon us. Mm -hmm. Like, we have odd ways that we feel like we're being, like, put upon or imprisoned or, like, you know, that we're being made to do something. And if you, like, genuinely, from a being point of view, go, you're, you're, you have permission here. You can say no, you can do this, you can do that. It frees us up. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Uh Awesome. Yeah. I, right. yeah. Yeah. I'll add okay. that, like, so Anna and I are in this kind of ongoing work to dismantle all of the conventional conditioning we have about what it means to be married. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, what that looks like is there'll be a moment when she'll say, uh, like, I want to do so and so. God damn it. Like, I, I, if I wasn't married, I would do so and so, you know, like whether it's like get in the car and travel for six months or something, you know, but 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 I'm married and and I'll say, well, like, if that's what you want to do, then that's what our marriage will look like. And that's the thing that, that we keep coming back to is if this is the thing that you want to do, then that is what marriage will look like for us. We'll just be we'll just be we'll be partners in what in us doing those things. Yeah. And again and again and again and again, that's the bridge that allows us to feel like we can be connected to each other. We can stay connected with each other and be in this lifelong relate. Like there's to the degree that I can, nothing that she wants to do or be is is in the way of us being life partners. And so that means our life partnership is fits us rather than the other way around. Unless your partner it's decides, oh, I'm going to go live under a bridge and wear a tinfoil hat, right? That's just not. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, my, my definitions are pretty broad. If, if yeah. Anna said that, I would say, well, then that's what our marriage is going to look like. Oh, yeah. like that's what. Well, well, so just, yeah, that's that's interesting. No, I want you to know the kind of stand. Like this might blow. Like this I'm trying to talk blow. like standards. Like what's a realistic standard? Well, I mean, I mean, listen, we would, I mean, what's a realistic standard? It depends. Yeah, like okay. if I wanted to explore something or whatever, but yeah, it's not something I'm going to explore. If she, <laughs> if she was, if she was uh, running drugs for the mafia, I would be a hard no. If she was trafficking okay, in go. child sex Okay, yeah, 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 I okay. would be a no. No, okay, good. But, I'm glad at least there's but, some some and, and obviously yeah. those uh those boundaries and those standards um change, especially if you ever have kids like myself. Uh yeah. anybody yeah. that has children yeah, that changes the whole I can't I can't go off absolutely. on a six month vacation and just tell my <laughs> right. kids aren't gonna understand daddy yeah. needs time to be by himself. <laughs> like they're not gonna yeah. get that. If she's if she's doing self harm or like like harming others, you know squandering our life savings at the casino or driving at yeah. 90 miles an hour without yeah. a seatbelt. Those are things I'm a hard no to, but yeah, you know, okay. in terms of her being who she wants to be to the degree that it doesn't like, she's not like failing on her legal obligations or something. I'm a yes to it. So that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing was that there are times when like, well, we have an evening walk on at a lake that's beautiful and there's ducks and everything and sometimes i'm like wow that was really fun and she's like yeah it was okay i i don't really like uh, you know it was all right and i know what that, that now i know what that means and i don't it's like it's i take it in the spirit that it's intended which is i'm in a state where it's difficult for me to enjoy anything enjoy ducks and, but me knowing <laughs> right but me knowing that gives her the freedom to be in that space. Yeah, and then she'll so. she can look back on it and go, "Hey, it wasn't the best, but man, he was there. He was there mm -hmm. for me." Um, and that then it then it suddenly turns into a positive memory, even if the ducks weren't all that interesting at the time. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, exactly. Okay. So let me uh, let me move on here, and that way we can get some more of this done. Um. Okay. Ooh, this is a doozy. Uh, oh, good. We love doozies. Good. Well, this one is kind of a doozy. Okay. When your partner or friend, that's schizoid, goes no contact slash communication, what do you do? How do you deal with your partner's emotional detachment when it happens? Um, so how do you, uh, so how does the individual that is with a person that likes to temporarily ghost them um, for, and, and maybe is it, and maybe they're not even entirely sure why they do it, but like, you know, not like, oh, you got ghosted because the date went bad. I'm talking about like you're in a relationship with somebody and they have occasional times in which they, they kind of detach and disappear. Um, what should a person like know about that? And how can, how can they approach it in a way that they won't feel um, as if it's a slight against them directly? I think that's what they're asking. Like, or an attack against them like when somebody just ghosts because a lot of schizoids yeah. ghost yeah they'll just be like fuck this i'm out and then they're just gone for like a week and then they return if they return i i think it depends on whether you have the kind of friendship or relationship with them where at least you can talk about it so for example if they disappear and then they show up again and kind of like nothing happened and you can't really discuss what just happened. Not that you want to put a bunch of attention on it, but at least if it can be acknowledged, like if the person is self-aware enough to say, this is just something that I do. And I don't, I'm not, I don't even often know why, but it's just a way, it's just a thing that I sometimes do. And you need to know that this is, this is just a truth about me. If, if they're capable of saying that, then you have, you at least have a choice whether to recognize this has nothing to do with you it's a natural part of who they are and to get j that makes it easier for the person relating with them to to accept there are going to be there are times when they're just going to be gone and then they're going to come back and you have the relationship with them that fits that but if they can't talk about it or they pretend that it's not true at all or that like nothing happened and you can't even establish that this is a pattern it's then it's much harder then it really does feel like you know like uh, where did you go do you know what i mean to yeah, me that's the I, distinction that makes it handleable or not yeah and i want to i also want to just do the science about this that's great what you said i also want to do the science about this um uh when people leave belonging like a, a sense of connection and belonging is an actual like hardwired need for us um and when people leave suddenly and when we feel abandoned um or when someone ghosts it shows up in our own brains like the, the in the same spot where physical pain shows up so it's it's you're not crazy if you feel like serious pain when someone who you've been really close to suddenly leaves um you're not making stuff up there's nothing wrong with you when you feel that way so i first want to establish just like hard facts around that there's there's biology and there's science around why we feel so fucked up when when people leave um i want to piggyback on what ken was saying which is um if there's uh if you're in relationship with someone who can't even uh talk about it then i i would highly suggest that you um put the person you could still be in relationship you can still be in connection you could still be with that person but you need to put them in the appropriate place that they need to be in they can't be in the inner circle where you like where you're constantly like talking because if not then you're constantly putting yourself in a traumatized state yeah. You can still be connected, but just sort of put them in like a like a further out concentric circle from you. Okay. If they're someone who's got some self awareness, um, I well, this is what I do because um, I, I used to be one of those people that was like really really close to people, and then I would something would happen, I get overwhelmed, and then I would be out for like a week, a week and a half, or something like that, and nobody would like they would be like, "What the hell's going on?" I couldn't even talk to people. Now it's not that place. I'm much more like I could talk to people through it. But at that time, what we came up with was literally like, I would be, I'd be like Mayday. And if they, I would literally just text Mayday. I'd give them like, if they tried talking to me, I'd be like Mayday. 
And they knew that I was going to be inside of this spot for a while. And then when I came out, I'd be able to talk about it. But uh, I just would have like a one word thing where I was like, I'm fucked. Okay, <laughs> that's actually really good. Because that's what I was going to mention, too, is um, one of the best ways I would say if you can bring yourself and you're self aware enough that you're the type of person that ghosts people. But at the same time, you're concerned because you don't necessarily want to burn that bridge completely. Because yeah. there's times yeah. in your life as a schizoid where you go, I want to burn, burn all the bridges burn all the bridges right i want to be alone burn all the bridges you might feel like that at that given moment but you may let her resent that action or regret that action after you come back from feeling that way and but, but oftentimes what happens is that once you do you already burnt that bridge uh and you feel either dumb or insecure about trying to return about trying to yeah. show back up again because you feel like an idiot for just disappearing or you feel dumb for the thoughts you had before that you no longer had because a lot of those thoughts were a defense mechanism in which somebody either was getting too close or you felt overwhelmed and then you decided to ghost everything and everyone because you're trying to just get away from everything. Um, if you have a pattern in which you do that and it's consistent, the best thing you can do is if you become closer to somebody is explain to them that you have that pattern and then tell them, yeah, I, I'll send if I ever disappear like that for a week. And you try to text me, I'm going to send you this, I like, I am um, need time alone or something. And yeah. then just respect that, and then we're good. And then I'll be back, and it'll be okay. Like, I just, I need, I yeah. need that, I need that gap. And if you can yeah. bring yourself to do that, that's a big deal. That's a big step. It is a huge deal. And if you're at the point, so you, you asked the question about if, like, if you know someone who goes, um, uh, I want to say something to the people who are involved with the ones who ghost. Mm -hmm. Understand that they don't ghost because it's a great idea. They ghost because something like the, the they're on like number five DEF comp. Do you know what I mean? They have like something has happened and they are triggered in a way where they like have to batten down the hatches and they're like, I need to like cut off and like literally bring all up the, the drawbridge from the mall. All, all external community, like something has happened. So it's not like. Uh, personal, although it will feel just given how biology is, it might feel personal. Like if they're doing that, something has happened that they're like, you know, hello, hello, like all the alarms are starting to go off. Um, uh, texting them obsessively uh, will be the exact opposite. Like, uh, yeah, because in the problem too is they're gonna come once they if they if they come down from that feeling, they're gonna see this giant essay of texts and then they're going to feel even it's going to be even more difficult for them to want to return yeah. to that person because yeah. it's going to be like oh my god they're they're probably so upset with me they're probably yeah. freaking out i don't want to deal yeah. with all that emotional baggage yeah. that they're going to come yeah. at me with i don't want to be a part of it like especially yeah, yeah it, you don't want to jump straight into a situation like that but if you can come back and you told them hey i just need time alone and you come back and they act like okay they're back that's good then you feel um, a lot yeah. better about the situation. Yeah. And by the way, I don't want people who have been ghosted to not be able to talk about stuff. Like if you're someone who has a uh, 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 schizoid adaptation to the degree that you can, I, I like, it would be lovely to recognize, Hey, I know I ghosted. You probably have feelings about that. I am genuinely working through this and trying to do the best that I can the the thing that i always think is like the most helpful thing is this will happen to me every once in a while how can i communicate it in the future so that it's not as shocking to you like coming up with things in the like what you were talking about about like hey i'm i need to be in the hole for like five days or i need to be whatever but I, like some way where there's a little bit of communication beforehand, some way so that the person who got ghosted doesn't feel like they're completely fucked. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, just because we're at 40 minutes now, I want to go ahead and continue the next question. That way we don't Great. miss any good ones um, and run out of time here. Um, okay. So this is a nice one. Uh, how so this has to do with esteem right because there's situations and there's one particular adaptation that often shows itself that's similar to like trying to ghost somebody but the reasoning behind it is different um and that's 
uh, in, in situations where the schizoid partner proclaims that the other person that's attempting to get close to them is um, that they are not worth that person's time. So if uh, a lot of the times this is because the schizoid themselves feel a lack of sense of identity or self. And so when somebody gets attached to them, uh, like emotionally, it becomes it's like, what exactly are they attached to? I can't even attach to myself in so many, many regards. What exactly are they connecting to? And then there's this automatic thought of this person deserves better. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve this empty husk of a person and or this person that's so unhappy with everything all the time and doesn't enjoy much like that's not what this other person that i'm learning to appreciate or i'm having feelings for because they're so great or whatever they're so much better than me you know you have these sort of thoughts in your head uh in relation to that because it, it, it's it, and oftentimes it isn't necessarily that you're like so sad about it it's more like like no i this this isn't right they shouldn't i should i'm making them fall for me and there's nothing there and that's messed up and i should just you know stop seeing them like and, and how the question is essentially how how does one validate or um how does one confirm to a person that lacks a sense of identity that who they are matters to them that, that's uh, this so question rich. is so rich and my heart, I know this spot so deeply and my heart sort of like, my, so my sort of tears and breaks a little bit. So first I just want to say to this, A, I, I like, I, I feel this way off and on uh, through, I might feel like this off and on for the rest of my life. So I hear you, I see you, I feel you and I get it, like totally. Um, I, uh, how I, I don't think a person can, you can, you can, I want to hear what your thoughts about this are, but like how I usually deal with my clients, with the people I know with myself is when someone is like, I don't, I, 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 when I'm in that spot, if someone's trying to fix it, it exacerbates it. Don't try to fix it. Don't, don't like try to make it just, just, just be with it and go, I know some days are like that. Some moments are like that. Because so, the moment we try to fix it, mm -hmm. we make it more real so somehow. Are you saying that, okay, if I, if a, par a person is in a situation in which they're with a partnering with somebody that's like that, that has those kind of feelings, are you, are you saying that it's better to not try to validate them or not try to impose that you do care about them and that... It, I, I, that you are important and all those sort of things. Is it better to avoid such language? Yeah. So, so it depends on what's going on, right? If I'm inside of it, like take for instance, if I'm inside of it, like I feel so unlovable. Like if I'm inside of that spot, I feel so unlovable. I don't understand why you're even with me. I feel like such a burden. I don't fucking get yeah, it. It's I've like, been there too. The so I get it. I've been you want to even wife. be here with me, Jesus? I can't even feel myself. Why the fuck am I? You know. So Ken and I have the kind of sense of humor that Ken will play with me inside of those moments, and he'll be like, it, like depending on where I'm at, he might play with me and be like, totally, man. You're like, but he's like with a sense of humor to lighten it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I. But for example, you, yeah, I just I just needed someone to do the dishes. So as long as you're <laughs> as long as you're doing the dishes, you know, you can you I think I think I give you permission to stay here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like, don't the point being, that way. I deeply, deeply love this human being and I think she's amazing. But no attempt on my part to say any of that to her is going to land like no, no attempt on my part to to talk to her greatness and her wonderfulness when she's in that spot. None she's of wincing gonna just land you saying that. <laughs> What'd you say? And I said she's wincing just you saying that, right? No, yeah. I'm, meaning I'm, that kidding, no I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's going to work No, no, I'm kidding. No, it's yeah. so Go ahead. fucked, you know? <clears throat> and in fact, the more I talk her up when she's in that place, the more I lose credibility as someone who, who, is, who is credible. Because so so I don't do any of those things. I just a be with it, like just be with it. B kind of poke fun at it, you know, if it feels right. Like I won't like you know. And see, 
I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, yeah, let's go for a walk. Yeah. Let's, then, yeah. Bite let's go eat. for a walk and not say anything. Yeah, yeah, let's go for a walk. And we just like, let's like, you know, for me playing with dogs is like, if we go for a walk and I play with dogs, it's like the greatest thing. Like it usually gets me out of things a little bit, but, but like, it's a storm that needs to pass. And if I'm throwing, if he's throwing sandbags at the storm, it actually like makes the storm worse. So uh, it's, yeah. And, okay. and she's not in saying those things, she's not pulling for praise. That's not what's happening. No. She's actually describing a state of self-being that she's that she's in. So she's it's not like she's pulling for me to pr to tell yeah, her. She's fishing how for compliments. Yeah. Yeah. No. She's which not, which in, in in some cases there are people who do do those things. Oh, different 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 adaptations. Yeah, that's a different, <laughs> different adaptation. But there's adaptation. definitely people. Who do, we're talking schizoid. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, SPD. not SPD. Yeah. SPD. It's literally you are you are you are in the cave and describing the the hieroglyphics on the cave. You know the cave wall. That's what's going on in that moment. And and the way to to have someone come out of the cave in that moment is not to be like, no, the cave isn't like that. You're great. It's a yeah. no, 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 because it's like dissonant for us and so what I, like the best and i do the same thing with other people when people are like in the oh, yeah, it's the worst thing ever it's in the, yeah it's um yeah i mean i i like poke fun a little bit i try to like bring just a little bit of levity without agreeing without trying to make it different it's just it's it's it a storm it that will pass yeah it's a storm that'll pass there's there's one more thing that I want to say about this. There comes a moment when she does actually want to hear my honest opinion about yeah. whatever it is. There comes a moment when she actually like I've been having I've been having all these self hatred doubts or I've been projecting onto you that you don't like this thing or something like that. And in those moments um when she actually is ready and wanting to hear the truth yeah, my lucidity, job in those moments, moments of lucidity. Those moments are the, the most important thing for me to do is be honest with her. So if there is something I don't like, I have to say this is the truth. I didn't like this. I I don't I don't lavish praise. I don't like just be honest. I I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to hurt her feelings because there's plenty that I honestly, genuinely love about her, and I can easily list all those things. But my job isn't to to lavish her with praise. My my job is to let her feel the truth of what I'm feeling, and because I do that consistently, she can always trust everything that comes out of my mouth. And because she yeah. can trust everything that comes out of my mouth, when I say good things about her, they actually land. Yeah. And when he says honest things, there's a difference between you're you're being an asshole. That's a level of honesty. That's not the best level of honesty in the sense that like actually really too like big. serves. It's a too, big. too big. Yeah. Like like in that moment, you know, there there today or in the past hour, you have not been as generous <laughs> or as you know, your attention on others has been like a little lacking in comparatively speaking, you know, um, uh, there's just a difference in terms of like, you know, honesty and yeah, what it. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, good. I hope that tackles uh, the uh, if for the person that asked that. I hope so, too. Um, okay, this is this one's more uh, something that you could probably answer more anecdotally about yourselves. Um, since both of you, well, since obviously you've described uh, Anna yourself as having schizoid traits, and uh, Ken, you um, said that you suspect that <laughs> that seems to be the case based on uh, your own analysis and, and Anna's. Um, how do you guys uh, manage this uh, these sort of back and forths? Um, how how do you manage a moment in which both um, both of you are exhibiting the same sort of adaptations? Are you like self aware of those adaptations? Do you talk about them? How how do two schizoids or two people that have schizoid strong schizoid traits or adaptations communicate those things to each other? If they both kind of possess them and they're both aware that they possess them how do you how do you work around that how do you talk about it 
I mean, I think for us too, it's for the both of us, we, I don't know if this is a universal thing for other people. I can only speak about it for us. Okay. Um, we take turns. I, I, for maybe it's because I've literally been at this particular game with myself for decades and decades and decades. Like I've been, I've been looking at it and being with it and working through it and, and have had a, a number of breakthroughs that I'm, I'm, I have, a, 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 a lot of ability and facility to speak to the parts of myself and still be here. Um, that when Ken is, um, like there are times when Ken suddenly is like, like suddenly I call him the the cranky, you know, cranky barnacle, the cranky curmudgeon, you know what I mean? It's like, he just gets like, suddenly he's that person. I can snap out of me for a moment and just be like, okay, great. What's the, like the both of us are able to, not compete for who's the most fucked up <laughs> if that makes sense yeah. yeah i like that though we're not in competition about who needs more like our system the way our relationship is is that we know when one person needs more attention than the other one does and whoever's yeah. got more to give gives it and that attention looks very different depending on the person right mm -hmm. i mean it can, yeah. it, it can range anywhere from uh from just giving someone space to a blowjob. So, you know, it's just yeah. <laughs> or making dinner or like just leaving someone alone or letting someone watch YouTube channels or or like literally like going for like it it's it, each moment is different, do you know? No, yeah. yeah, it varies significantly. It could be anything. And and that's that's another thing too is um I always like to mention that people fucking hair get in my face. Um that people shouldn't um conflate their uniqueness to their personality disorder like because um or ass make assumptions about the person uh like very specific assumptions about a person because they make you aware or tell you they have a certain pd or a certain adaptations so um in in the sense that like the way one schizoid individual feels comfortable is not necessarily going to duplicate between people like and so i'll take that in mind obviously with any advice you're getting here um and all that but there are things uh on a more abstract level that can apply but when it comes to very much specifics there you go like in the case of anna she likes dogs so uh dog, dogs work put, putting putting dogs around at work but maybe in a different person case it's uh playing a fun video game with them or yep. or, or maybe it's uh, watching a movie that they like even if it's a movie yeah. you've seen 10 times already they just like to watch that movie again and that movie makes them feel safe or comfortable that show yeah. that thing that book reading that book again you know don't don't, don't question why they're reading that book for the 10th time uh mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. that they need to do maybe they like to read some poems in there that make them mm -hmm. feel at peace again whatever mm -hmm. uh those are like the super important things uh when it comes to that regard um yeah interesting. Kat, did you want to say something but yeah. yeah two things one like anna knows me well enough now that she often is the one who identifies you need to go watch some youtube videos <laughs> you know, like okay <laughs> i'll okay i'll do that yeah. but the other thing that i want to say is as a relationship coach who works with couples the thing that we're talking about here goes far beyond personality adaptations like if the the crisis point for any relationship is when both people are in their stuck place at the same time. For example, like maybe they're they just have different attachment styles and one person's aloofness is triggering the other person's needy clinginess and their tr needy clinginess is triggering the other person's aloofness and they're in this stuck place. The only way out when I'm coaching a couple, the only way out is for one of them to decide to be the one that pops to being sane enough to support the other person. And it can't be the same person every time. Yep. But the thing that, sh that Anna said about taking, you have, to, you have to learn, even when you're in the, if you're both in the stuck place, one of you, like you have to take turns, one of you has to rise to the occasion of giving the other person what they need so that they can get free and then give that person what they need. That's the only way out of that situation. Uh, it's yeah. uh, it's one of my favorite things in the world, uh, and, and the word is uh, reciprocal altruism. 
Mm -hmm. reciprocal mm -hmm. altruism um, is like yep. one of my favorite things in the world because it is it is an understanding that yes uh needs have to be met and sometimes you have to rise to the occasion and mm -hmm. because you know that you need someone to do the same for you in the in the future and if that's your partner that's what a partnership is um it's that understanding yep. it's not just um it's don't let it feel like an obligation because one thing's for sure schizoids don't like feelings of obligation but make it something you want to do uh because you want that done to you in return uh because you want to and this is how i've always described it and it's cheesy or whatever but i always tell people you need to combine the eyes to create a us right so um and and you need to see your kind of structured goals for each other the the, the goal structure you have between each other of creating a functional relationship or a love between each other has to supersede any um any individual like impulse uh when it comes to uh like being there for your partner sometimes you have to sacrifice uh just as much as they have to do the same and the and the more you and your partner are willing to sacrifice equally for one another uh at times and the the easier it becomes and the yeah. the less often it has to occur often uh in my opinion uh, yeah. because both people start feeling more and more safe around each other. Yeah. I mean, I would tweak the language a little bit. Like, yeah, it's I like, know. What my language is trash. It's like, no, 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 your language is not trash. Not at all. My, my, I, I it's completely, you're trash. It's completely yeah, trash. It's, it's the trash. worst. It's, I know, I know. It's all good. No, I would tweak it a little bit only that, that in, in that, like what it, in each moment you decide what you serve. Do you know, there are some moments when you have to serve when the relationship needs to serve one person in it in order to make the relationship like more uh robust and there are times when uh the like we have to actually like give up the thing that we wanted to, to actually serve the greater good you're always like looking to serve the greater thing um and uh like to me what did you use the word like sacrifice or yeah it's um, a bad word i, I know it's not it's a bad a, word yeah, i understand but, that but you, know you know what i mean like it's I give do. a part of yourself up yeah um, you have to do the to. thing that you don't feel like doing yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. exactly that's yeah. probably a better way of putting it sacrifice is a little harsh um okay so <laughs> this yeah i know exactly it's so so theatrical i sacrifice myself <laughs> for you right no because that sounds bad because that also turns into like this whole like point system back and forth like i've done this it much can. for you and it can. you're not doing this for me and you that's that's toxic in and of itself it could turn into a fucking yeah, shit is. show um oftentimes um so this one's a little more fun let's go with a, a something a little not fun but like a little less uh deep i guess and um what uh somebody is that a few people have asked me about is okay dating right so a lot of schizoids out there yes um the thought of holding hands and kissing or going out with somebody and socializing and doing all those things all those kind of normative things that it comes to courtship um all those things are oftentimes in the mind of the schizoid the opposite of anything they want to actually do so um you know and but at the same time there's this kind of incessant need to to find someone that understands you uh to find another human being that understands you uh and a lot of um a lot of schizoids are actually and this might this might be interesting to talk about with you ken uh a lot of schizoids are sexually adverse right a lot of schizoids tend to be sexually like uninterested for uh, a variety of reasons but but in any case just the, the normatives of trying to date go out um establish a romantic relationship those sort of things what sort of advice could you have for those people like um and also like what what's your dating tips for the schizoid that does isn't sure like how should they approach the idea of trying to date somebody or or seek out a partner when when they have all these apprehensions like what's what's their what's their plan what kind of plan can they do it's so contradictory i know it's like they don't want all this stuff or they kind of do they think they do want it but they don't but it's scary but you know what i'm saying all that back and forth you have a schizoid has with themselves about like trying to go yeah. out there and put themselves out there mm -hmm. like you guys what, what do you guys think kind of advice 
Ken Blackman? Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is just making this distinction in your mind between, like, there's something about this person. I talked about this earlier, but there's something about this person that's drawing your attention. So on some level, it is true. Like, you want something from them. That is true. But if you can separate that out, like, oh, I, you know, like all this, the way, like, I want to be friends with this person, or I want to date this person, or I want to, you know, like, whatever those things are that you, like, to separate that out, and just turn your attention to what would be fun for the two of you to do. What, what, in, what would be fun for them? What would be fun for you? And as long as you can kind of turn the attention away from each other and turn both of your attention to something... And if you keep doing that, pretty soon what you'll notice is that you're enjoying doing these things. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I kind of, you know, it's kind of fun to do these things together. Oh, like we're kind of bonded and we're enjoying each other's company. And yeah, I want to keep doing this with you. Like that is easier than attention on each other. The focus being on we're dating. This is an attempt at a romantic situation. Right. 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 That. Pressure. Yeah, that's 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 that that I think is a lot of what the schizoid is avoiding. Like they don't want to yes, be right. in a, a social situation yeah. where we are yeah. together on a date. This is now a situation in which we are attempting courtship. Like, yeah. like you can yeah. you can just do do fun things together that you both want, that you both that you know you both enjoy. That phase or that orientation can take you quite far. It can take you into the kind of connection that you want to experience. It can, act, uh, it can take you into the kind of sex that you want to experience. It can take you into, into romance. But just like uh, that, that orientation of we're just two people who are doing some, like we're two people who are experiencing life. We're doing whatever would, we would be doing normally, but we're doing it together today. And then we're going to do it again together next week can get you very far into actually being in a relationship. Yeah. I want to add a couple of things too for, I, I love that. And I was going to say something sim uh, very similar, like come up with, if you like photography, I'm just literally going to be like, if you have to go to a party, like to me, the idea of going to a party um, with no end hour in sight where it's just ongoing is literally like, yeah, shit. so like it's just you sort of want to die um and so i uh usually come up okay i want to be social but i have to do it in a way that feels good to me and then i so i go all right i will be the photographer i will be the person who like literally give me a job i'll be the person who brings something i'll make the case like if you give me a job then i can focus on that thing and it takes the pressure off of having to sort of, in this weird, vague way, relate to people. If I could just do this thing, then I can have an excuse to relate to people in a way that is like a beginning, a middle, and an end. Sometimes just like, okay, I have an hour. Do you want to go for a walk? Like, let's go for a hike and, and go up to the... Like, if I, if I give myself small containers, because large containers of time can sometimes freak me the fuck out. So if you give me a small container, hey, let's go, um, I don't know, do something. Let's go um, uh, wash the car for an hour. I don't care what it is. Just do something that is external that the both of us can put our attention on and hang out. Do you that, like the time limit aspect of it? You like no. Sometimes it that makes you feel comfortable. Real clear. Sometimes for some of us, it gives us a real clear like. There's a beginning, middle, and end, and it doesn't feel so much like pressure. Listen, that works for me. That works for other people. Whatever. Yeah. If it doesn't work that, for you, that works you really well for me. I, so that's why I find yeah. it interesting that you mentioned that. Time, time, like time containers and really coming up because what what has us feel like it's all or nothing. We have our own version of all or nothing. Like, oh my God, it means I have to be a boyfriend. I don't know how to be a girlfriend. I don't know how to be a boy. Like, it's just like, wow. Yeah, so just like shit. throw that shit out of the way and just be like, I like to, I don't know, um, 
I come up with something. I like to 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 ride horses. I like to be at you know like be around horses. Great. There's like uh, stables everywhere. I'm making shit up right now. Like I like to be around stables. Would you like to go for uh, you know horseback riding for uh, you know a couple of hours on Saturday? And then like you sort of start out by doing that. And maybe if you like each other, then you could do coffee afterwards. Like if you do that a few times or like like short little trying it on like a hat seeing if you like it seeing if you can handle it um and then you can expand from there if you like going to the gym gym is always a good thing to do if you like going to like i just come up with something that is external take the fucking pressure off it you literally feel like you're dying don't do that just make it small yeah and that is very good advice and i couldn't have worried that any better because the literally the time capsule aspect that you're describing is a beautiful thing um if like say you're gonna go out on a date you know find somebody that's willing to go out on a date with you that has a specific time limit maybe so that there's no pressure of anybody going to anyone's house afterward or something yeah or yeah because yeah, 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 yeah. because because there you know there's it, and, and that brings me because um those are some of the more major questions that uh that i was given but i did i did want to since you had mentioned it before i do i do want to bring up well, one thing is one one how, how does one find other like schizoids right so and, and do we're schizoid, everywhere yeah I know, <laughs> we're they're everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> yeah that we're everywhere and um but well one you can join my server uh so there is that possibility you can join my server that's full of schizoids and uh the reason some of these questions actually um manifested is because there have been instances within even my server of people developing these sort of intimate sort of connections with each other things that they 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 thought were incapable of doing uh yeah. impossibilities yeah. Uh, even and so you know that's that's part of the reason these questions are there um yeah. because there uh, there are situations in which you know I, I, I honestly think there is a distinct possibility that schizoids can get along incredibly well with other schizoids uh, uh, for a variety of reasons. And um, I, I, I mean, the reason why that is, I know that to be true is because we're not a monolithic block of like, where where we are a group of people who have varied interests in all and we're also like a group else. that's incredibly intelligent like we are actually our intelligence just shows up in a very sort of quiet the reason why nobody really knows you know like narcissists are like out there and they're like really like they run for president and they do all kinds of stuff you know what i mean and then you've got like borderlines that are just like lobbying and they're just like and they're, they're, they're very showy yeah and, they're yeah. very very showy but but people with, um, you know, uh, uh, that are schizoid, we're, we're the sort of like worker bees to a large degree, you know? And so um, there's all kinds, like we're musicians and we're, you know, artists and we're, we're people who are, are, are into computers, into things that like the intricacies of how well, things anything, work. Anything where things can get abstract, we gravitate yeah, toward. Yeah, yeah. Books yeah. and philosophy yeah, and yeah. things like that. So, for sure. So, so we're not a monolithic block of like, you know, just one, we have certain things that are overarching, but like the things that are underneath. And so um, you, you, it's just like anything else. You become interested in the thing that the other person is interested in. All of a sudden you become interested in each other and intimacy develops. Yeah, like and so, yeah. Okay. So, but, but how, so, I mean, finding other Zoids, honestly, is it's, there's no, my goal is to eventually build up a community that's big enough to where that won't be a question. Uh, that that's what I want to do. Uh, it, which is like, oh, okay. Um, I'm diagnosed schizoid. I would like to talk to other schizoids and possibly seek out a you know, I don't know, a dating situation. Okay, whatever. Like maybe you can. Maybe if my community is a thousand or ten thousand people or ten thousand schizoids yeah it might be easier to say oh i'm also from this state would you like and then establish because i've noticed that schizoids like probably would benefit a lot and, and not in, in in most instances from a distance sort of relationship in which it's just communication before they ever actually meet in person like it, it it's kind of backwards because it doesn't usually works i guess for a lot of neurotypical people to do it like that but i think for schizoids it might be beneficial to not actually to establish connectivity on a communication basis before any kind of physicality like affection wise gets introduced 
Uh, yeah, I do want to say one thing to that. Yeah, though, but that's just my thought. Like it is absolutely, absolutely the case. And, and know that with someone who's schizoid, even if you're not, but especially with someone who's schizoid, if you've established a long running relationship via text, via long distance, via like the, the internet, mm -hmm. the moment you get into physical proximity, it is a brand spanking new relationship and you have to start from square, like, like point one. Yeah. That point nope. one there, though is that, useful. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like it's no like, assumptions no no presumptions just like as if it was a blank slate yeah yeah like getting to know the person all over again from all scratch. over again yeah uh breadfruit uh posted on here uh so most people think the schizoid needs zero social relationships i said that to my psychologist phd in canada quebec and he said that is the old definition of schizoid yeah uh luckily they're starting to change that certain psychologists are starting to realize that there's a little bit of literature developing um it there's but it, man it's not there like there is no. not enough literature on the truth about what the schizoid experience is the yeah. actual need the, the having actual normal human um wants and needs is something that happens to the schizoid but it just takes a very different shape um and unfortunate for many schizoids is that they end up convincing themselves that they don't need any of those things and so they put themselves in situations in which none of those needs are actually being met in fact they're being neglected by the very person that has them um because they don't want to accept that those needs even exist because it's too well difficult. we that's how that's how we became schizoid is at a very young age we decided yep don't want to need anybody. Well, I'll just yeah, take care of myself. I don't need don't anybody. I don't, need, I don't anything. need anybody. I don't. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So, uh, since we, uh we have a little bit more time here, I wanted to get into something fun too. Okay, Ken, you're the sex guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. when are we gonna start talking about sex? Okay, we'll talk about <laughs> sex. I just wanted to do it toward the end because there are there are some zoids out there that as soon as I start talking about sex, they've fucking jump ship on the stream or like okay. they, they stop watching because like i said well i will say this ken has 10 minutes so we can only talk about so okay, here's the time sex for 10 minutes okay. we only have 10 minutes literally okay. to the well, dot because Ken's you know got what i'll call. tell you right now there's times where all i need is 10 minutes so we're okay <laughs> okay it's called a quickie let's do a quickie but, uh, ken. Uh, that's all right. right that's right okay so what i want to know ken is um how does the schizoid experience translate into sex like oftentimes i've noticed that either schizoids i talk to are either very averse to sex or they're highly they have very high libidos and are hyper focused on specific acts or things fetishes if you will so there's two extremes i it's rare that i come across a schizoid that is just oh i just want you know intimacy and you know your basic you know, missionary or something like it's yeah. just usually gets very complicated in one extreme or the other. Um, I'd like yeah. to hear your opinions on that and your thoughts on schizoids and sex and, and get as yeah. graphic as you need to. I don't care if, if you need to, but go ahead. Well, keep in mind that sex is one of the most intimate things we ever, ever do, right? Like you're literally bearing you're physically bearing your body and coming into physical contact with another human being is probably the most certainly the most intimate and and possibly one of the most confronting things that that you can that you can actually do and with another human being right with all of the with all of the unpredictability of what another human being is going to do in that part so you're at the most vulnerable with another human being naked in physical contact so a lot of a lot of uh what happens in sex for in, in this for schizoids is has to do with like the bigger context of all the things that they have to do to manage um you know the self-management and the management of the environment so that they so that they feel handled so that that deeply influences how they relate to sex um and so often, like what what I'll have people do is just get back to the basics of what kind of touch feels good, so that we can get it back to like a body based thing. Like what you know, uh, the person who's averse often 
is, is averse for protective feelings like, oh, no, that's more than I can handle or something like that. Um, and then the person who has specific things, specific go to's that they go to all the time, all of that often is is in the form of management. So if if you if you have a partner, the that management you have, of the very thing that you were talking about, like it's too right. much. But if I could just control it inside of this, I could get right. the pleasure I want do without you, it being think completely that, overwhelming. That's why the fetishes uh, happen. Like, is it maybe part a of it? Part thing? of it is part of it. Cause part like of for it, myself, yeah, because... it was all about the physicality, right? Before, okay. right? I intimacy so came something... secondary to the physicality right. of the act. And that's how that was a way right. for me to detach from it mm -hmm. uh, emotionally. Mm -hmm. it was Do you like... mind if I ask you something specific when you say the physicality, like the actual, like, get off, like the, the, the yeah, like the just coming you know, inside well, of a woman? It, yeah, well, the, 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 the meat, the meat aspect, the meat material aspect of it, like the like ass and like, ass like and I'm going to be and really ass and tits and, and yeah, and, like and the whole yeah, the moaning, like, the and masturbating, all the, all, inside, yeah, the all, whole all that yeah. stuff. Like it was like an emphasis on the physicality of it and the control over that physicality that caused arousal mechanisms to kick off, and mm. any kind of emphasis or focus on the intimacy of it would have the opposite effect on me. I feel. Um, uh, the not, not, not anymore, but in, in my, my twenties, I would say in my, in my twenties, yeah, right. it was the case, yeah. but go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, Ken. Right. So, so that's an example of what I'm talking about. Like there was a thing that you like, keep in mind our, our fetishes. And by that, I mean, the thing that, that is our go-to that gets us off, that arouses us and turns us on and gets us, you know, going and, and ultimately gets us off. Whatever that quote unquote fetish is whether it's mainstream or something fringe, keep in mind the degree to which there's a feedback loop. If something, if you're, if you're, if you're being turned on by something and you have an orgasm, you've, you've strengthened the neural connections between that stimulus and, and like, there's a, there's a, uh, a really strong, um, like stimulus reward that moves us increasingly to a specific thing that that becomes our fetish mm -hmm. so that's often how that happens and often how that happens is like what you were saying where like the the intimacy the intimacy of being connected with another human being is a turnoff but the physicality of the of their body is we a turn off. the meat right? dimension many of us call it a yeah, meat yeah, dimension yeah, yeah. the meat dimension yeah, yeah. um so and so you're simultaneously managing your own, you know, your own emotionality and also getting into arousal. And so that's how a person ends up with, at whatever place on the map that they are. So for me, what I get down, what I get back, what I have people do is get back to what touch feels good. Like what touch feels good? What touch feels good on your genitals? And from there, you can actually build and and construct a, a sex life that's not based on on any of those things but but it's based on what actually physically feels good to your body and uh, as yeah. well as uh, um, i'm assuming as well as the context and environment that is required for such feelings to like so so one touch in a certain environment and context feel bad but mm -hmm. in right. a certain other one it feels good so yeah. uh, right exactly and i think i think a lot of i'm not saying that's the case because i know there's people out there that are like genuinely asexual but a lot of the people that say that they are abromantic or asexual oftentimes what it seems to me to be is that they believe there is no context or environment in which any kind of touch would be good and uh, yeah, you're absolutely spot on that's yeah, i agree so so i think there's just an assumption that's being made there because of either past negative experiences or because they have never actually experienced a situation with somebody in which a touch would feel good. Um, and for Correct. some people, it even for the most people that like say are say people that are romantic but they're more sexually averted, um, my my advice and thought on it would be that um, don't look to sex uh, if you're somebody that it isn't quite there. Look to just general affection and get to that point of like hugs. Mm -hmm and kissing yeah. and holding hands um and yeah. find a partner that is willing yeah. to do those things with you and not expect sex as a reward uh but that's yeah. a difficult thing that is going to be a difficult thing um and i know there's a, a few people out there that i've seen instances of people that have become romantic with one another but both of them are averted to this kind of sexual stuff 
but yeah. you know over time they start kind of developing it too so yeah and and i i almost always can get a couple to find some kind of sexual touch that feels good even if it's like if they may start at like could you just use your hand and cut my vulva for five minutes and then we're done like nothing else is going to happen you're just going to put the palm of your hand on my vulva for for three minutes then you're going to take it off we're going to say thank you that was a lot of fun and we're going to do do something else we're going to turn our attention to something else start however small like find whatever touch however small or however simple feels good and then build a little bit more and build a little bit more and build yeah, even in if a little it's a bit more rub and, or foot rub or whatever yeah yeah so i want to i want to and ken's got to jump in a moment but i yeah. want to i want to actually parallel that the what is true for how to be with people who are schizoid outside the bedroom is a hundred percent true for how to be with them in the bedroom only it is exacerbated like if you have to go slow outside you have to go really slow inside the bedroom Quite and literally. just be like okay like very slow like okay what actually feels good like is it too okay great we're just we did it for about 10 minutes that was awesome no judgment no pressure no, no pressure anything. also no pressure to no. finish yes right that is yes. very important because if there's a yes. schizoid woman out there she might not be able to orgasm oh well the more pressure you put on the 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 goal the worse it's just gonna get and same thing with yep. the man too like yep. the, if 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 your schizoid boyfriend or person doesn't ejaculate oh well did they have a good time anyway good right if you make them feel like they had a good time and there's no obligation and there's no pressure next time they may yeah mm -hmm. our idea like my our sex life the ken and i our sex life is not like our people's idea of sex life is kiss tweak you know pump come like it's literally <laughs> like there's a whole arc to the whole entire thing and like our idea of our sex life is exp like it expands to include and i'm not talking about kink or anything i'm talking about like we don't have a rule about what it's supposed to look like we could we could make out for 15 20 minutes and when it's done we're done it could be like him i'm just going to be really straightforward him going down on me for like four minutes oh, okay i'm full me going down like we don't follow the formula we don't have like we don't, we don't have a yeah we just like go with what follow genuinely feels good and is in as in in resonance with the both of us and we don't have a rule or pressure about what it's supposed to look like how it's supposed to finish if Dude, it's supposed that, to finish that what? that part is so important because there's so many instances in which what happens is that the partner of the schizoid or partner of the person that's you know has some kind of apprehensions they start uh feeling insecure because their partner isn't like so you have to be able to go okay i don't want to do this anymore and it can't be taken yep. personal Yes. It has yes, to be yes, like, yes. okay, I'm not feeling it right now uh, for whatever yep. reason. Um, we yeah, can try again one other time. In the middle. And then it's mm -hmm. okay. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not because yeah. you did yeah. poorly. No. Break up the idea. The idea that, that that's in the movies and all that shit is killing our sex life. Well, like, enough. Like, porn doesn't help either, either, but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't. Porn doesn't help none of that. Okay, Ken, you have to go. Do you want right. yeah, to go? Wanna... It's been okay. fun. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys close it up. Hey, you don't have, you <laughs> don't have, you don't have to lie if it wasn't fun anyway uh okay so so man i actually damn there's like 25 people so i guess having you on is beneficial i'm just kidding uh <laughs> kidding uh but no uh what i did want to kind of wrap things up with a little bit is um i want you to talk a little bit about um shill shill away shill yourself oh to dude shill. i know it's the worst it's the worst just no shill. i don't mind i don't mind shilling i do it all the time it's there just that go. like so i i'm i'm certainly you can find me i'm on youtube at disorderly conducts and i think that uh, schizoid I'm gonna put links is gonna get, underneath yeah you're gonna put links and then uh, you can also after, find me on my website sure. Um, and I'm uh, accessible. I'm on, you know, the Facebook and Instagram. You have your own like, website like thing and everything, right? I do, yeah. It's myrightness.com. Okay, um, cool. But, yeah. uh, but all of those things, and I, uh, I'm, I'm in my life's work, just like you, schizoid angst. It, my my life's work and my life's passion is uh, genuinely, genuinely like having 
uh, people genuinely feel like whole and right in their skin um, uh, and come together in a way that uh, uh, whatever whatever trauma or whatever thing that had to shatter out, shatter outward uh, to come together and be right and to uh, live a fuller, more rich, more connected life with uh, ourselves and others. Slip case, slip pace. The um, where is the Discord? Go to the about me. Uh, it might be linked underneath the video, but if you go to the about me on my channel, uh, there should be a link to the Discord there. You just got to get vetted through our little process, and then that's it. Just go through there if you're looking to to go into that. How about Ken? How about we show and I was about to say, and yeah. for Ken, and for Ken, so he, you can find him at kenblackman.com, and uh, he's also on Facebook and on Insta, um, and uh, he. Ken at KenBlackman.com. Okay, perfect. Um, do you have any... Uh, man, I, I was... I, I See, I should have got to this part before Ken does. But um, I'm actually curious uh, if one day Ken gets his little... Like, if he really feels that he's a straight-up Zoid, um, he should check out the community, too. You come join us. You got it. Uh, well, you know, it's funny is that he... he yes. There's, there's all kinds of ways where I'm like, you do? Because he was talking about, and maybe you all will recognize this. He's like, oh, I was, I felt like an alien for like most of my life when I was younger. Like I just wasn't a person like everybody else. And I was like, you do realize that's... That's a lot of stuff to unpack right there. He's like, I just didn't have any emotions. Like everybody was just like... <laughs> like, I, like there's all kinds of stuff where I was like, you do realize. And he was like into, like he into the things that he was into and he's into like all kinds of stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's just that he's had such a unique uh, training and he lived in a community that was like a deep dive in intimacy and relationships and sex. Like it literally so went against his own default conditioning mm -hmm. that he, he, he's trained a lot of it out, but it's, he's so still interesting. That's that fascinating man. to me. That's so fascinating yeah. to me. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think, uh, I think we're good here. I think we can. Yeah, it was such a covers. pleasure. I, I don't I see mean, any if, questions the, that I, we missed or anything on the chat. I was just double checking. At the risk of, at the risk of scaring everybody, it's such a pleasure. Like, <laughs> me being like, I love you all. No, no, like, don't, I, tell I, them I, it, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. I know, it's too much. Stop. It's too much. They just, did, they just deleted everything and they just unsubscribed <laughs> to my channel. Thanks a lot, Anna. You <laughs> fucked it up. It's uh, like, I'm fucking it all yeah, up all you're the fucking time. It all up. But um, no. it's always a pleasure to be to be here and to spend time with you and to talk and stuff. I it's like I'm home to a large degree. It's like, oh, I get to talk about real things about how you know we all Absolutely, are and yeah. so whenever. Uh okay, well then also um before I log off completely here, if you guys want to support me, uh you like what I'm doing, keep doing these sort of talks and conversations. I want to take this further. This is what I want to do. Uh, I have a Patreon. It's in the about me or it should be underneath I have a PayPal, whatever you want to, what, whatever kind of monetary support. If you can't do monetary support, just like subscribe, um, drop my video links, wherever the fuck you want. I don't care. We got to get the word out for awareness on this subject and uh, to see if we can get a few more schizoids, not to feel completely doomer about everything in their life. Um, uh, Anna, if you, if you, if you don't mind, like maybe like two or three minutes after the, the stream ends, I'd like to talk to you about something. You Nothing crazy. It. it just has just business stuff. Anyway, <laughs> so much pressure. Okay, yeah, we have so a much pressure. Container you want to get like two minutes only. Two minutes. Yeah. Oh, no, God. I'm just kidding. Oh, All, God. Right. All right. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for.